I would like to just jump in and do the most jarring uh, tonal shift of all time because, like, let's let's just get into the game and see how we do with it. Uh, so why don't we just uh, get straight into it? Um, I'll have you all introduce your characters briefly, and then I'll kind of give the preamble. So the prompt that I gave everyone is that uh, each of you is going to be uh, sort of an archetype of a person you you meet at seemingly every music festival or something along those lines. And all of you have varying levels of experience of that kind of culture. So I'm curious to see what you all came up with. Wow, I did not get that prompt. I just came up with something off the cuff. But you can pretend like I thought this was an archetype of somebody <laughs> who I met at, the, met at a music festival. I think it fits. I think it fits. I mean, you can you can adapt it if you want, like a minute. Like, no, no, no that's <laughs> I definitely okay. we'll sent you the prompt, but we can whatever we'll you want to be. We'll just go with it. I I put it together last minute. I it feels very disrespectful of the offer to be on your show to do that last huh? minute. I also don't even have my character sheet. I did it online. I didn't know I had to save it. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, who would do their character sheet last minute? That's so disrespectful. Or definitely. write the game last minute. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I guess I'll go first. Um, so my character's name is Smokey. Uh, my friends call me De Bear. Uh, it's like an inside joke. Uh, you can just call me Smokey though. It's fine. Um, I am average height, size, build, and looks. Um, I'm wearing a hoodie and pajama pants. Um, both have cannabis leaves printed on them. Um, my hair is lank and unwashed under my beanie. Um, for my background, um, I've been to Shum like five times, Space Coast like three times, uh, Fozzy and Astral like two or three times. I went to five different festivals this year. Wicked Woods was like probably the best, but it was like so fucking cold, man. Um, I had like a great time though. Like, you know, the beats are just like, like the whole time is great. Uh, my, um, do I do you want me to tell you what I'm good at and what I'm bad at as well? The whole sheet? No, cool. we can come up with that as we roll. Okay. Um I guess for my unique talent talent, I can talk for 45 minutes interrupted without a response from the other person in the conversation, which causes their eyes to glaze, glaze over um and temporarily lowers their like perception. So like maybe we could do some like sneaky t- things in that time period. Um and uh yeah in my inventory i have a uh, pocket full of floor pills so perfect did you test them or are you purely winging it <laughs> no bro it's like it's it's fine like I'm ground sure scores <laughs> yeah exactly this one they, they look i think they look like what i think they are so like just, just try them out you know i feel like honestly who tests their drugs anymore anyways right because it's like I'm not there to test my drugs. I'm there to take my drugs. Okay. Yeah, I'll test them when I put them in my mouth. Am I right? That's the that's the surest way to test them for sure. <laughs> as a public figure, uh, as a public figure speaking on uh, responsible psychedelic use, I stand behind this. Don't test them. <laughs> just take them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. I hope people knew that I was joking there. <laughs> No, don't worry. We'll clip out the context and. Oh, please! Are you you're tweeting right now, right? You're live tweeting this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this character you've come up with, I feel like, uh, I feel like honestly, you could change a couple key words and like th- this is somebody you've seen at a festival. You know. I mean, like, it's pretty uh, close. It's pretty close. The the appearance for sure. Well, do you, do you want me your... to do you want me to introduce myself then? Yeah. Do I do I say my background as well, just or my name, just appearance and background? Yeah, do your name and appearance, and uh, if you uh, if you want to make the background a little more festival, you can, but uh, no pressure. Read it incredibly monotone without any inflection. Jesus, just joking. <clears throat> don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, I, I don't know. How I'll change my background. I really went out on the edge. I was like, yeah, last time it was crazy. I'll just go crazy. Uh, so my name is. Shrivel, shrivel, T, which is a nickname. Um, <laughs> my appearance: I am tall and emaciated, mostly skin and bone, seemingly already dead and decomposed for at least three years. Long beard and hair, 
both very gray, nails oddly reminiscent of the vampire in 1922's Nosferatu, yet somehow still attractive <laughs> in a very smart looking jumpsuit. Um, anyways, my, my background, maybe you guys can help me change it. Uh, once a hipster on the scene way back in the day, uh, Shrivel T, myself, was exposed to a tragic chemical accident involving 13 tractor trailers, a helicopter, and one of those cat cafe or one of those cafes where there are cats all over the place. And my mm-hmm. grossly deformed figure is a consequence of that accident, likely due to the mix of caffeine in my bloodstream and cat and dander present on my skin at the time of the accident. Um, so, <laughs> can, so I, can I throw we'll... out a quick spin on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. Once a hippie on the scene way back in the day, um, but also still on the scene because he's just an older guy who's never quite gone away. Uh, Shrivelty was exposed to a tragic chemical accident uh, involving a festival porta potty tipping over. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, no. his, uh, his grossly, you know, deformed self since then is a, is a consequence of uh, that accent, likely due to the mix of all of the things that were in people's body waste, uh, as well as the stuff that was just in his system for years. Wow, a perfect confluence Beautiful. of internal and external forces meeting and crystallizing into the glory that is shrivelty. You have every available disease simultaneously. <laughs> Thanks, Porta Potty. <laughs> All right. So, um, this story is a uh, it's a continuation in a world that we've already been in. But I'm gonna do the little preamble. Should I introduce myself? Oh, you haven't done you. I have Sorry, not. Go ahead. Uh, I am fi- 36, five foot seven, quite lean and slightly muscled, as I do yoga and dance all night at the 250 plus festivals that I have attended. I have a <laughs> intricately shaved mandala in the side of my closely cropped dark brown hair. I have extremely dark skin and some very questionable looking sunspots that are very likely some sort of long-term skin damage. <laughs> I wear nothing but a, uh, a poncho, a rice hat, and a boda bag. Uh, I also have a Prince Albert penis piercing uh, that I got at the peak of an acid trip at a festival because I felt that it was my destiny. It was the best way to self-actualize in the moment. Uh, I am from Croatia. I was uh, brought up in poverty. I moved around. My mother died at a very young age, and I quit my poorly paying retail job to attend a trance festival and at the age of 23 and have been festivaling for 15 years since chasing festivals around the world to Australia and South America and the Pacific Northwest, never quite finding enlightenment, but always riding the enlightenment high, or at least what I deem to be. Yes. That is my, uh, also, I don't speak Croatian anymore and I don't have a Croatian accent from, uh, <laughs> as a result of so much time spent abroad. Okay. Quick clarification. You said you're wearing nothing but a poncho and a rice yeah. hat and a bag. So you're just doll yeah. ducking it with your oh yeah bolted cock hanging I out. I did see a guy at a festival like this and it was cocking. incredible. It was a beautiful <laughs> sight. Serious question though, like, have you continued to stretch your Prince Albert as a way of sort of like just having a brief moment like gauging it? No, I mean like yeah, gauging it. I think you said aging, yeah, gauging it. Like, yeah, it's uh probably like a four gauge at this point, so like quite thick, not like not like a a large hole, but definitely a larger hole than normal. Like large enough that you got to sit down to pee every time, or it's just a mess. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, definitely. Certainly. Yeah. It is taking up the entirety of my urethra as it comes <laughs> out the end. Certainly. Flawless. Beautiful. All right. And we're going to cold open here before we get the opening credits. You find yourselves, all of you, sitting around a camp at a festival. A man named Bearcat has excitedly gathered you to insufflate copious amounts of drugs. He instructs his partner, or sweaty snuggle buddy as he calls her, her name is Powder Puff, to dole them out, and she presents a mirror with four white lines of powder on it. From left to right, she presents them as blow, special K, cake, and 
She pauses before guessing. Also blue? <laughs> so what, why don't we get a quick sense of how each of you came to the exact same camp? What, what, what were the, what's the one sentence in explanation of how you ended up in Bearcat's camp? I have been wandering around for hours with the short-term memory of a goldfish. Approximately 15 seconds is the maximum amount of time I can keep in my mind at any given moment. So I just stumbled into their camp and sat. Um, I, wait, what day is it in this? Is it, is this the Friday, the Saturday, or the Sunday? Ooh, good question. Uh, here, we're going to roll a d4 for that. Okay. Also, what time of day is it? Uh, I got a two, so it's going to say it's Friday. And, uh, let's, uh, let's roll for hours past noon. Hmm. Oh, can we throw that dice cam on? Yeah, it's, it's midnight. Okay. Am I, wait, midnight, so midnight coming in Okay, it is, morning? it is several minutes to midnight on Friday. Okay, um, and I, I'm like, oh, more like Friday, am I right? Um, I've been just like getting high all day, like smoking some J's, and I like, like the kids in Hansel and Gretel. I like saw this like cookie cum trail of like what looked like floor floor drugs, um, or like ground scores, um, whatever you want to call them, and I followed them back to their camp. I was like picking up these drugs as they drop them and followed them back to their camp that way that is how i found them uh so for myself i don't know if it's time for this to come out but as a consequence of this horrendous and yet somehow uh like life renewing accident that i had with this porta potty i developed a sort of capacity um and uh, in that capacity i well, I'm not going to reveal it yet, but let's just say I utilize that as I often do, especially on Friday nights in the effort to try to find some people that could give me free drugs. And I had the sense that lines were being doled out. So I landed in that particular, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that particular camp, um, nose, nose out and ready. A common occurrence. Some stranger just appears in next to the communal joint or et cetera. You don't know their name. Nobody knows them, but they fit right in. <laughs> All right. So um, Powder Puff is basically offering um, this mirror towards you, saying, like, yeah, pick one. Take it. Well, do we have to pick just one, man? Or can I, like, do all four? Um, she, she goes, ah, like, why don't you start with one? Because there's, there's three of you. And I just think, uh, let's, well, let's go one each and then maybe, maybe you can have the mystery line if you want the other one. I mean, I'll well, just take it now. I'll I'll, I'm, take I'm, I'm jumping in. Sorry. You're, you're just taking too long. I mean, like you've had too many <laughs> joints. I just got to get in there. I, I know which one I want. I want the cake because, you know, since the accident, things are just kind of strange. And if I don't mix it up, then I just feel like it's not really working for me because everything is happening all the time because of this whole thing that's got going on in my inside since the thing came on me. So I would just like to hit it up now. Plus, I haven't had a line in like at least five minutes. I got to like get back up in there, if you know what I mean. So I'll take the cake. Totally, bro. It's all, right. all you. <laughs> that takes the cake. <laughs> and that was so your name is sh like Shrivly? Shrivly. Shrivly. Like Okay, so Shrivly took the third line, which was identified as cake. Shrivly surely knows what that means. Shrivly does. Shrivly's calming down a bit, but also is now also extra alert. Well, hold that thought. So <laughs> Okay. Uh so I believe uh Smokey was kind of the next person who was like at jumping at the bit here. Yeah, I'm like I feel like I just needed to chill out a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take the K because, like, I just, like, I'm feeling a little anxious, you know? So, like, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that line number two there. Line number two. Okay. Powder, 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 powder puff. Yeah, so you're going to take line number two? Oh, my God. Powder puff. I just got that because you're, like, doling out powders. Oh, yeah. You know, they're they're clever around here. Oh shit, that's so good. All right. Uh well there are uh, two lines left. Uh so you uh, I, Yvonne, 
uh, which would be how they pronounce it in Croatia. Unless Ivan. you've anglicized it to Ivan. No, it's Yvonne. Okay. Um, I'm definitely going to uh, stare at Powder Puff for an uncomfortable amount of time and then abruptly snort the fourth line because I'm line. adventurous. I want the mystery blow. Because there's a chance it's not one of these boring drugs. All it's right. something cooler. And Powder Puff goes, cool. Well, if you guys don't mind, maybe I'll have the f- first line because this one is blow because it's on the... Wait, and then she kind of takes her hands up and does the left right thing. And she's like, well, let, my, my my left. And as she's trying to figure that out, uh, she's she's kind of puzzling over these lines. Uh, Bearcat comes back with the containers of drugs that Powder Puff never grabbed, mm. marked with red, blue, green, and pink tape. He asks her why she didn't give them out yet, and she explains that she did showing him the containers she used, with our, which are marked with red, blue, green, and pink tape. Slowly, he realizes with creeping horror the mistake she's made. Sweaty snuggle, buddy, he says. You were dispensing from the maroon, navy, forest, and magenta ones. She stares at him blankly. He continues, you were supposed to get out the scarlet, aqua, lime, and lavender ones. After an awkward pause, he adds, it's fine. Just scoop it all back on the right container and put this stuff on the mirror for our friends here extending his supply to her and gesturing toward all of you collectively. So he he's, he thinks you haven't taken anything yet. Oh, I don't know if I'm like super high or what, but I thought that I already took it, but like maybe this guy is right. Did we, does anyone else remember if we took the drugs already? Uh, I definitely didn't take any drugs and would certainly need another. Thank you. Oh, I certainly yeah. can. I mean, I mean my remember. first one. <laughs> So, uh, well, that last one is on the mirror. Is anybody going to, like, just go to snatch it, or? It seems apparent that she didn't give you the line she thought she did. All right, no takers. So she pulls it away, and he starts going, oh, shit. Okay, so you took, and he looks at the uh, containers that she did pour out. So, uh, Smokey, what you have taken a big, fat line of is 2CD. <laughs> Nice. And uh, so uh, each of you, depending on which substance you took, uh, you are actually going to uh, gain an extra uh, skill and an extra weakness. So if you already have the skill or weakness, there's no effect. So like I already obviously know what 2CD is because I've been to Sham five times. But like if you could explain it to my peeps here that we just did the lines with, that'd be sick. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. So the two CD in, in <laughs> okay. the practical effects, you have gained, you've gotten better at resilience if you're not already good at that. And oh, you, you're now, you're, you were now good at resilience and bad at agility. Um, oh, I was already those things. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no change. <laughs> Do you want to make me doubly good at resist resilience and doubly bad at agility? Uh, I don't know how he would do that. Um, we'll come. We'll come back to that. Uh, so next, uh, Shrivelly, you've taken two C E, a big fat line of it, and uh, this has made you good at stealth, but bad at intimidation. Sneaky. Okay, well, I was I was good at intimidation before, so that um, just cancels out. You're normal at intimidation. Okay, okay, uh, but I am now also good at stealth. Which so is you good, note that. which is really good because um, I'm going to be seeing a whole lot of things right now, and uh, if people didn't see me, that would <laughs> that would be helpful. I, <laughs> who knows what I'm about to get get up to? <laughs> That's right. And finally, we have Yvonne, who has taken two CI. Uh, this is making you made you good at persuasion, but bad at speed. Hmm. And Smokey was in the process of trying to ask, well, what exactly is this substance I've taken? Uh, And you start getting an answer, but it's not too long before you can't really parse people's answers. And this is an experience that's kind of happening to all of you simultaneously. While you all begin to panic, reality begins to break apart. Colors swirl like tracers, intensifying as music amps up in the background. The drop of the music coincides with a pulling back of perspective, 
in which your viewpoint withdraws from your physical form like an out-of-body experience, zooming out in both space and time in a manner that shows you that everything you've ever experienced in this life, past, present, even future, was just one arc on an infinite repeating metaphysical sine wave. And as you pull back that space, pull back, that space time shrinks to a manageable size, a little fragment of reality and a fractal of infinitely nested realities. As that small reality collapses into a single point, you experience this profound deja vu as you find yourself experiencing another lifetime, every bit as long and as real as the one you just lived, the only one you thought you'd ever had, but somehow also condense into a manageable, perceivable stretch of time from this new vantage point. This pattern repeats, and you realize that you've been living slight variations of the same life for eternity, and yet, you also sense that each loop is occurring and collapsing slightly faster and more intensely each time, culminating uh, in your death in a sense of collapse. And this goes on for... Infinity loops. Until finally, the pulling back experience... Uh, pulls back from a collapsed reality into an ineffable purple void, the various realities being little tears along the courses of big, long electric streaks of biochemical pink lightning as they shrink and snap shut. Finally, the recursion seems to pass, and you find your completely disembodied selves adrift in this endless expanse, feeling spiritually like desiccated carcasses lying in the desert sand being picked at by carrion. So you're now disembodied presences in a purple void. Shit, dude. That was fucking Oh, no, wild. you can't speak. You're disembodied. Oh. Can I thank it at everyone? No, you can just perceive. I feel the bird peck at my flesh. Yeah, you definitely feel that. Uh, Yeah, so mostly what you can do is wait. Do you want to do a short wait, a long wait, or an infinite wait? How long do I have to wait for it to be 420? An infinite wait, probably. Okay, I'll do an infinite wait. All right, after an infinite wait, we now are, uh, that's our opening bit. We've now cut to the credits, you know, Star Trek style. And uh, let's let's get filled in in the backstory here. Mm. Hopefully everybody uh, followed that perfectly. Got it. Last time in the Holiday Zone, we followed the 2017 exploits of two intrepid heroes, Courtney, better known as Starseed Child of the Indigo Knight, and Brad, who loved techno. The unlikely duo accidentally stumbled their way into a featureless white void, where they were greeted by a foppish dandy calling himself the Prince of Christmas, and explained with great urgency that Christmas was in peril. He presented them with three keys that matched obviously to three respective doors, which they obviously took to be a puzzle and spent 20 minutes agonizing over how to proceed. In the first door, they encountered an evil spirit in a dark robe who identified himself as Antipope Constantine and who was torturing Santa. In their attempts to rescue Santa, they accidentally crippled him profoundly. They then did a passable job of corralling and curing wayward reindeer, including Chet, the worst reindeer, before becoming exhausted at the prospect of sorting out an elf strike, and Starseed set herself on fire. The two found themselves back in reality, and the course of Christmas was altered forever. Now, and oh, we have to roll for what year it is. 2014, so this is a prequel. Sorry, was that a two? 2012. We've flipped back into 2012. Now in 2012, the extra-dimensional forces of the holidays are at work again. So, you're all floating in this void, but eventually something seems to happen. Less than being adrift, you find your disembodied selves being pulled in a direction, and the more you're pulled, the more this featureless purple void seems to have some elements of structure. You can't discern it visually, but there seems to be a definite ground, and as you alight on it, you have a sense of your arms and legs again. Uh, and if you look at your own bodies, Smokey, you will notice you're now a very like stereotypical like fantasy dwarf. And uh, Shrively, you're sort of like a classic uh, elf. And uh, Ivan, or Yvonne, more of a wizard. Hmm. And... Do I have a cool hat? Absolutely you do. Describe your cool hat. My cool hat is purple, just like the void we were just in. Uh, the brim is approximately three feet wide, uh, and the top is about two feet tall, and it 
bends quite seriously to the right. Does anybody else want to describe their new look? Uh, no, but I would like to check my pockets and make sure that I still have my floor drugs. <laughs> so, all right. So here's how um, the inventory is going to work. So there'll be a thing coming in the story that'll allow you to pick something. Um, if you've written stuff in your inventory already, tell me one thing that you have on you. Or you can save it for later if you want to like decide later. I have a fanny pack. It Beautiful. matches my jumpsuit, which uh, remains. It's a very what color is your jumpsuit? jumpsuit? It's black. It's, it's of course black. It's a it's sort of like post psychedelic, you know. I was color, and then now it's all black. Mm. I just trip so hard eventually after the whole porta potty thing that I eventually <laughs> realized that uh, the infinite void is nothingness and blackness, and I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to be an expression of my uh, of the enlightenment that I tasted as the porta potty chemicals <laughs> drizzled into my various open orifices. <laughs> Tasted like enlightenment. Uh, good lord. <laughs> All right. Are you keeping your inventory a secret there, Yvonne, or do you have something on you? I have nothing in my inventory. All right. So uh, you also notice, now that the void is starting to look almost like a physical environment, you notice a very real physical-looking hatch on the ground. And uh, each of you can decide this for your own, but in your head, you hear the voice of the last person that you you heard speaking in the old reality. If it was Bearcat, you just hear the vo- word hurry over and over. But if it was Powder Puff, you hear the word safety over and over. Mm. And you are now able to move. Okay. Do, does it matter who I'm hearing? Do I have to tell you guys? Uh, I think that's a little bit of headcanon, just for yourself. A little treat for you. Okay. Cool. I'm going to stumble towards the voice. Wait, is it, uh, the, sorry, the voice coming from the hatch? Yeah. Okay. I, it kind of it kind of seems like we should go in this hatch. Does anyone else feel that way? And I, I just start opening it without waiting for a reply. Cool. As you open the hatch, uh, you feel a gravitational pull pulling you in, and it pulls your companions along behind you. As you hop down through the hatch, you fly through a long tunnel, accelerate faster than you ever thought possible, like a sudden roller coaster drop to the nth degree. The next thing you know, you're just sitting there in a camp chair, like a festival camp chair, in a concrete bunker. Mm. Is there anything else in this bunker? And is it lit? Yeah. Uh, Looking around. It's lit as hell, bro. It's fucking sick. You can see that same hatch above you. You can see it opens to a purple expanse, but it's slowly coming closed. And uh, you're kind of in like a recessed area of this bunker. You know, it seems almost like a landing zone. There's these little chairs there. There's some little like nice rugs and tapestries. And uh, kind of at the end of this recess, you can see what looks like a giant like futuristic command center. Uh, Just all these like, incredibly futuristic displays glowing computer terminals and there's a hooded figure walking toward you i would like to sit down i mean it's been an infinite time since i've had a body and for whatever reason still i just feel really tired <laughs> and so i just uh i just want to sit down in one of those chairs I, I if this guy's already coming towards me this hooded figure then i'll just i'll just wait and let it let them arrive yeah yeah you're sitting you're comfortable uh, and the hooded figure uh, comes closer to you, and he says, "Privyet, uh, Hey, bro. I don't know if you know this, but I don't think you're speaking English. Hmm. I pretend to understand him, uh, and walk up to him and uh, try to shake his hand. Uh, okay, so if you go up to shake his hand, um, your hand is kind of like, his sleeve just kind of slides over your hand and your hand vanishes, Hmm. and you feel just like the iciest feeling shoot through all of your veins, and you just feel like the coldest, 
most deathly sense you've ever had. It's comforting in a way, but it feels like death. Can I try and hug him? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, honestly, he's just taken aback by that and uh, lets you hug him. And it just, like, he feels fairly corporeal. Like, are you kind of doing that, like, because you're handshaking, you're doing that kind of, like, wraparound bro. Yeah, hug? Yeah, with so one it, arm still in his sleeve, I am going to try and hug him with my other arm. Yeah, so you kind of take him by surprise, and uh, you get the hug. He fa- feels fairly corporeal, like in a way that, as you would expect, and like he feels like cool to the touch through the robe, but mm. through that hand that's shaking his, and it does feel like a hand, it's just iciness coursing through your body until you almost have to pull back mm. from uh, that near frostbite, and he kind of like cocks his robe at you quizzically and says, Vine Govorite Poruski? Now, to be clear, you said you forgot Croatian? Yeah. Okay, so you don't recognize that sentence, which is like identical in Croatian. <laughs> so, like... I looked did it up. You, did, was, did you say brewskis? Because, like, it's about time, I think. Could you, you got, do you have beers down here? Is that what you're offering us, man? The road figure kind of puts his, like sleeve to his head in like a a weird approximation of a head scratching motion says English yes yes English yes ah bleep is me sorry fuck I always forget I uh English still big deal in earthly realm is no problem we'll speak English my bad oh thank god man I just thought I was way too fucking high well, I tell you, you are way too high, but that you know, we don't have time to explain. <laughs> I'm just grateful that I've had this time to take a little rest because uh, while the two of you engaged, I had an opportunity to sit back and assess the situation from the comfortable, what do you say, lawn furniture chairs? Yeah, like festival chairs. Like folding chairs. Yeah. So my low back doesn't feel great, but my legs are feeling very rested. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely correct. So uh, seeing you all just kind of staring, the anti-pope understands maybe he's got to just, he's got to f- hold your hand a bit. It's okay, so I brought you here today because I'm a very busy man. People to see, things to do. You three in particular, worst vibes of whole festival. I have to say, really <laughs> am impressed. Each of you, absolute black hole of vibes. Please, I must stress, take this as compliment. Is what makes you best suited for job, what needs to be done. What, what do you need us to, to do? be done? Yeah. Yes. Fuck, bro. I had like an indica earlier, and I don't know if I'm going to be good to do much. I... Indica couch, you should probably take a seat. If I, yeah, bro. If I'd known we were supposed to be doing shit, I would have done a sativa. Uh, will we be paid for this gig, and will that payment be in more drugs? <laughs> oh, yes. If you If you are successful, I can pay you in all earthly manner if you succeed on mission. I can take you over to command center. We have uh, three missions available. I'm into more drugs. Let's do it. Okay, so you follow him. And he... So you, you follow him to the larger room and you see the vast network of advanced technology is far larger than it appeared from your limited viewpoint in the entryway. There's a giant hollow globe that shows the earth that you know. And... Uh, Who's uh? Do you want to? Why don't you all roll me two dice, or does anybody need? Okay, so let's do let's do uh Smokey first. Uh, roll both sets, and then the of the pairs, the worst one is what she got. Okay, that's a six. What would be you, good or bad? Good. All right, so roll them both and keep the better number. All right, you got an eight, and uh, we're gonna roll for you too. Five. All right. None of you notice anything interesting about it. And, or sorry, when you rolled an eight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, that was you? Yes. So you notice on this globe that there are, uh, there's a marker for where this festival was uh, in, uh, let's say it was in Canada. And, uh, but then this, an assistant switches the map and there's this totally imperceptible map. It's inscrutable. You can't follow it. It just says Christmas dimension under it. Hmm. There's three markers on it in disparate locations. 
Okay, welcome to our command center from which we plan and execute strategies in support of eternal war for Christmas. While church proper does most uh, direct confrontation, negotiation, diplomacy with other factions, from this clandestine division we take part in more precise, less visible operation. I am head of this division called Extra Legal Christmas Command or Xmascom for short. Uh, it's well kept secret even from most members of church itself. Hmm. How long have you existed for? Oh, I am uh, eternal and immortal. Uh, the thing is, w as time passes in Christmas dimension, it is same as in your world. It maps directly, you know? It is uh, it is what you call 2012. But uh, the time in here matters exactly as much as it does in your world, which is to say not at all, but it's far easier for you to understand. Does this mean Santa Claus is real? Santa Claus is a decadent American creation. He is uh, he is part of Worst Christmas Faction, one's in charge right now, and it is in part of our sacred goal. Uh, as uh, I am, I don't know if I told you, I am associate of Eastern Orthodox Church uh, to uh, reclaim the spirit of Christmas to its uh, you know its proper owners, which is us. Any more questions, or do you want to see your missions? I want to see my mission. I want to see what's up here. I'm ready okay. to go. I'm ready to make this happen. Yes. We've got uh, three options, and uh, each one is going to target different uh, faction we have problems with in uh, Christmas Dimension. So first option is uh, to sabotage the boat of Sinterklaas, which is, of course, Dutch Santa Claus, uh, most racist Santa Claus with, uh, with his little racist subordinates. And uh, yeah, uh, this Sinterklaas, he's an imposter of St. Nikolai. Do not believe his lies. He claims to bring toys and money for children, but always just leave shoe polish for doing blackface. Uh, it's time <sighs> to strike forceful blow to the heart of decadent Western European racism. Option two, uh, kidnap the Queen of Christmas. Uh, it, uh, oh, and sorry, first uh, option, medium difficulty. This one, hard difficulty. The Prince of Christmas's continued acts of terrorism in ethereal plane have gone on for too long. This aggression cannot stand. He is crafty and careful, but his mother, decadent and complacent. She is best target for kidnapping attempt. And of course, finally, Option three, sacrifice the Yule goat. It is easy. Goat is uh, tethered, unsupervised. Gain access, cut throat, make sure he's dead. Very simple. No more decadent goat nonsense. Why Why do you care about the goat? Listen, there, there's no time to explain. You just have to understand that uh, these, all of these other groups, they're trying to take away Christmas from you and ruin it. Uh, and uh, we as uh, forces of evil have to stop them. Why should I care about Eastern Orthodox Christmas? Ah, well, it's very simple. It's, uh, you know, we are one true church, as you know, and all of these other forces, they are corrupt and decadent. And, uh, you know, bottom line is uh, we, we need your help. If we don't uh, regain a little uh, power of spirit of Christmas, we do not have power to send you back to your world and you are trapped here forever in featureless purple void. Mm. <laughs> I'll take the goat. Uh, you like are you just kind of like reach out and like just be like, yeah, this is what I'm doing? Or are you going to confer with your teammates here? No, I'm going to reach out. I, I just feel like I, I feel called, like I could do this. I could get this done. All right. So you reach out and uh, you you press a button and all of you are pulled into this like holographic map. Well, wait, all of us are going. We're not each yeah. getting a separate mission. No, you're... Uh, you're all, uh, you're all, you're all in this together. Wow, you you team, hear it as you kind of get sucked in. I didn't know, in. team. I didn't know. <laughs> as you get sucked into this map, you kind of hear the bro, fading voice. I said it was the easiest one, so like, I'm cool with it. The robed figure, uh, you hear his voice trailing off. You're all in these two gears, or... And, uh, yeah, you don't see him anymore. You, you find yourself, uh, in a, like, a waiting area. It's almost like a little, like, military-esque dropship. And you see an equipment locker in front of you and there's uh, another hooded figure next to you uh a lot more like 
feminine than the first one. It's kind of like when she speaks, it pierces you with the most ethereal, beautiful voice you've ever heard, which is in stark contrast to that guy's like gravelly, like phlegmy voice. And she goes, yes, hello. We will be landing in uh, five minutes. Uh, you will have <laughs> they, options. They sound exactly the same to me, but. Yes. <laughs> well, it is, it's theater of the mind, you know? <laughs> And uh, she says, okay, i give you a quick rundown. We have, uh, we have some equipment here. We have a portal gun. We have bolt cutters. We have invisibility cloak. We have a sack of smoke bombs. We have a poison inked pen. And we have 50 feet of hemp and rope. How does the portal gun work? Is it like portal game portal? It is exactly like video game portal. You have blue portal and the orange portal. Do I have to search for very specific walls that I can shoot the portal onto? You know, it's probably going to be uh, very favorable once you get into it. Okay. Do we each get a device or do we have to collect it? Yes, all pick one device. Did you say one of them is like a hemp rope? Yep. I, I like, you know, hemp is the material of the future, so I'm taking that. Cool. So that is now your second inventory item. I will go with the poison inked pen. Is that right. what it was? Poisoning yep. pen? I picked the portal gun. All right, you picked the portal gun? Uh, why don't you roll those red dice? That's how many to- total portals you can shoot. Seven. Okay, so you guys have chosen sacrifice the y- Yule Goat. You find yourself adjoining a very dark farm, the area lit only by the faint glow of the mildly shimmering portal you entered through. Beyond the fence in front of you, about a hundred meters away, you see the lights on some of the farm buildings. In all other directions, you see thick, impenetrable woodland. In the farmer's field, there is a small barn to the right, an outhouse in the middle, and a grain silo to the left. Past it all is a cozy-looking farmhouse with all of its lights on. Between you and the buildings, there are many large hay bales, conveniently a quick dash away from each other, distributed evenly, distributed evenly across the area in a staggered grid. Can I jump onto the hay bale, shoot a portal at the barn door, the barn side, and then one onto the ground, and then jump through the portal? Uh, yeah, you do that, and it pops you out uh, directly next to the barn, um, about like 100 meters ahead of your uh, co- companions here. Am I able to to like run like a, in a quick dash to catch up? Yeah, um, you you start running. Are you running straight toward him, or are you kind of like ducking and weaving behind the hay bales? Uh, I'm ducking and weaving. All right. But, and Smokey, you can do anything? Uh, yeah, actually, before these guys get away from me, am I able to like tie my rope to one of them so that they could just drag me? Oh, are you going to try to like lasso and water ski off one of them? I mean, I wouldn't say lasso, but I'm probably going to be like, hey, guys, can I, like, just hitch a ride? Is that cool? And try. But you want to do this before they take off? Yeah, is that okay? I think they've already taken off. Oh, okay. I'm just going to stumble slowly after them then. Okay, because you could probably try to lasso uh, Yvonne here. He's just, or sorry, no, you could try to lasso uh, Shrivelly. That sounds like like a lot of work. I'll just catch up. I I just know, I don't know how to tie a knot. I just, I'll just walk. (laughs) Okay, so you're standing. So, Yvonne, you're standing next to the barn, mm-hmm. and uh, you hear uh, you hear some chatter from down near the end of the house, going, "Hey, what's what's that glow?" Can I get rid of the portal? Uh, yeah, I feel like you can just do that. Cool. I'm gonna get rid of the portal. All right, and then they go, "Oh, must have been the wind. <laughs> the wind glows." Yes. Um, I'm Wait. going to... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Could I have just walked through that portal? Uh, Probably. Well, if you're... It's too late. If, it's you're watching now, through the, <laughs> if you're watching through the ground portal, now you just see... Uh, which which one is still there? The orange one or the blue one? Uh, so it'll be the... Let's say I fired the orange one at the barn wall and the blue one at the ground. Okay, so you're just looking at a big blue oval because he turned off his orange portal. Okay, well, never mind slow thinking again damn it smoky fuck that's what happens <laughs> um, right. i'm gonna hide next to the barn and maybe like is there is there a window nearby 
Yeah, there's a window next to you, and if you peer into it, you see a, a goat, very festive-looking goat. It says festive vibes, mm -hmm. and it's inside of this barn. It's tethered. It seems like there's some other motion in there. It's hard to tell. The window's kind of foggy. Cool. I'm going to wait for my uh, compatriots to catch up to me. Okay, you do that. Well, unfortunately, on my way there, thinking that I was more agile than I actually was, I tripped uh, on one of those hay bales and actually just impaled myself uh, oh, with no. this poison ink pen. Uh, <laughs> what kind of poison is it? Is it an instantaneous kind of death or am I in for a difficult uh, couple of minutes here? Uh, I would say that um, you've got about two minutes of agony. Exactly. Okay. okay. And then you kind of will probably just shrivel. Uh, shrivel -er, shrivel -er. uh, 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 I You feel like you have one. just enough strength uh, uh, to plug any sort of any sort of media properties you would want anyone with an earshot to check out. Uh, just <laughs> if if you make it through this, please just just tell people to check out James Jesso's Adventures of the Mind podcast. It's <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, most of the episodes, anyways. Uh, it hurts so much. I wish this podcast was playing now to to serenade me on my way through. The intro music is really interesting. Uh, you hear one of the voices from the house area going, "Oh man, did someone say Adventure Through the Mind? That is all. Oh, I love that pod. It's so good, and it's on YouTube as well. It's really well produced." Uh, you can hear this really well as you die. Uh, I'm so happy to know somebody else likes something that I like. Uh... As as I walk by you, I, I give you a handful of my floor drugs so that you can decide if you want to use them to stanch your pain. Uh, I Sucks, reach, bro. I reach, but unfortunately the, the poison is taking too hold. My muscles are contracting rigor mortis is setting in early but i do my best to try to offer you the pen so that assuming there's any poison left you now also have this item i, I uh, thanks bro i don't need a pen but I, i'll take my drugs back and i, I collect my <laughs> drugs <laughs> and, I, and i walk away thank thanks bro sorry sorry about your death uh have, have a good have a good afterlife i guess later bro and then suddenly Shrivelly blinks out of existence as though a camera was suddenly snapped off and there was just darkness. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I'm, <laughs> right. glad, I'm glad I got that closure, though. How All far right. away is uh, Smokey from catching up to me? Uh, I feel like uh, she's about halfway across the field. Okay. You guys get try to speed run the end of this adventure? I could... Uh... I could give her a speed boost, him a speed boost. I'm going to shoot a portal at the wall next to me mm -hmm. and then shoot a portal, attempt to shoot a portal underneath Smokey as they're walking. <laughs> All right, so I want to see how accurate you are here. Um, so why don't you roll agility? It's just going to be a normal die roll. There. Uh, no, it's just two. Like, it's uh, you're rolling for... Yeah, so you you get in the right general area. So you you lead her a little bit as mm -hmm. she's walking. And so it kind of have you ever kind of like missed the end of a a step on your stairs? Yep. So she kind of has that with the edge of the portal. And she tumbles through the portal, smokes her face on the other edge of it, and then kind of like why they call me Smokey, bro. Smoke yeah. my face on everything. <laughs> yeah. And she kind of crumples uh, out of the the vertical portal that you put on the barn door okay. at your feet. So and I've now shot four portals, correct? That sounds right. Okay. And I have seven. You've got three left. Did Smokey uh, damage their face in any way? I like... think Smokey should roll resilience here. What oh. are you good or bad at it? I am good at it. Um, can someone give me a roll? Yeah, do you want to roll both pairs for her? And we'll keep the better pair. I'm like... 11. 
So Eleven yeah, Eleven is very good. I tumble, I tumble flawlessly out, and I go, "Whoa, bro!" That reminds me of the time at like, I think it was the second year at Sham where I like fell into this hole and I came out and I was totally fine. Did I tell you guys that I went to Sham five times? That's a lot of times. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I got a bracelet for every time I've been there. Do you wear them? Do you put them on your wrist when you reattend the festival every year? Of course, bro. That's the only way to do it. You got the little hat with the owl thing on it. It's sick. Got it sick. in every color. All right. So <laughs> you are you are unharmed, I take it. And uh, it's kind of like, you know how when people... Uh, often like drunk drivers like they'll kill the other people but they won't die because they're all like loosened up mm -hmm. you basically are so stoned you didn't brace yourself and you just kind of flopped harmlessly to the ground beautiful <laughs> your face smarts a little from hitting the edge of the portal but that's you know it's not it's not damage yeah, you think my face is smart that's the first time anyone's ever said that about me that's real nice uh, man yeah and you feel genuinely good about that cool <laughs> All right, so you're both standing next to this barn, and uh, you you kind of hear footsteps slowly approaching, almost as if uh, people are like, kind of gradually coming in earshot, and they're like, "Oh yeah, they're talking. They're talking about adventures of the mind out there." So, I try to tell Smokey I have a plan. Actually, first, uh, in the barn, is there a flat roof? I would say it's a peaked roof. Okay. Is there, there's no flat surface above the goat? There's rafters. Well, okay. bro, if it's like a it's peaked hollow. roof, why don't we just peek inside and see what we can do? Fair. You Can't do. argue with that. Okay. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you describe, uh, are you going to enact that plan? Why don't you describe how it manifests? Yeah, Yeah, totally. just peek on it there. Um, so I'm going to jump um upwards actually can i get can i get a boost bro yeah i uh put my hands out underneath the window to give her a boost okay all hey. right good so i want uteral strength oh cool and uh, i think that's going to be some agility for smoky there i am bad at agility all right so Seven. This is your roll first? Yep. What did you get? Seven. Okay, not bad. Uh, and then roll both again for for Smokey here. And you're also going to take the bad number. Holy Eleven. shit, that's wow. the bad number? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty flawless. So you're, you're kind of struggling with it, and it feels like almost like you pull something as you lift her up, but you do successfully lift... Uh... Sorry, wait, what are your character... Are you, you, what's your character's like front-end situation here? Uh, it's like just, just like whatever, bro. I just okay, so you 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 successfully uh, lift her up. So uh, you can use he, she, or they. Yes. All of them, whatever. Okay, cool. Yes, totally. Yeah. All right. So you've you've successfully been lifted. What do you do now? Um, is it? You said it's a peaked roof. Is it mm -hmm. like thatch, or is it like? I would say it's wood. Are you? You're also like you did this on the outside, right? Yes. Okay, so you're on the outside of this like wooden roof. Okay. Is there a chimney? A chimney for the barn? Oh yeah, it's a barn. Um <laughs> right, right, right. Um can I okay, I'm gonna look I'm gonna try and peel back one of the planks to drop myself in. Uh yeah. Um okay, so you uh why why don't you scamper around on the roof for a bit and uh see if you can find a loose plank. What are you gonna do while she's doing that? I have a, I, I want, you know, like you can place a portal above, a portal below, and then it will like generate momentum. Oh, yeah. And then you could like put another portal elsewhere, and then it would like shoot the goat very high, and then the goat would like land and maybe kill itself just from like landing on the ground. That's what I wanted to do, but you can't do that unless you have a flat surface above and below. So I don't know if I can do that. What I could do is just take the goat with the portal, right? I could like shoot it on the wall, shoot it under the goat, and then the goat would be there. Sure. So you're gonna you're gonna kind of like dip into the barn here. 
I am going to shoot a portal underneath the goat through the window. Through the window? Through the window. Are you going to like... The window's glass. The window's glass. I'm going to smash the window. All right. So I want you to roll stealth. Okay. Are you good or bad at that? The good number is they're both the same. They're both the six. six. So you successfully smashed the window. Uh, actually, ooh, six. You smash the window. You cut your hand, and you hear the voice in the distance going, "What? The, what was that? What okay. the fuck was that?" And then the, there's like some footsteps accelerating toward you. And how many is it? You have three portals left. Yeah. Are they coming uh, out of the barn? Or are they no, they're coming the from barn. the farmhouse, so they're probably another further, like fifty meters down the road. Okay. And uh, I did a little roll for you there, uh, uh, Smokey. You don't find any loose planks up there. Oh, bro, I have an idea. Pass, toss me your portal gun. I'll portal in through the roof. How are you? How is that a thing? Maybe. Yeah, well, your two portals are like right, entrance and exits to each portals. other. Okay, right. For some reason, I was thinking it would just make a hole in the roof. So I could, what I could do is shoot a portal through the now broken window and then throw her my portal gun. Yeah, I think that would work. Okay, let's do that. Cool. All right. So you, uh, the goat's a stationary object, so you do all right with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're going to just lob that thing up to her? Yeah. All right. Why don't, uh, why don't, why doesn't she roll agility to see if she catches it? Okay. Are you good Uh, or bad at agility? I am bad at it. Five. Fuck. Uh, yeah, so you miss the portal gun. It lands back directly on his head. Cool. Oh, Are there shit. any consequences? Sorry, uh, ow. Uh, I, I, I'm like kind of dazed and uh, I flip her off and then fire a portal at the door instead at the, at the wall and walk through it. Okay. So you, so you just basically portal to the wall and you like walk into the barn. Right. So the, so wait, so you shot a portal under the goat. The goat. There was already one sitting on the barn, right? Actually. Yeah. The goat, the goat will come out of the wall then. Yeah. So the goat, um, like tumbles out of the wall. Okay. But it still has a tether that is, uh, linking it to inside. Uh, I take the tether and wrap it around the goat's neck in an attempt to oh, Jesus well, Christ. okay, which way does the does the gravity work in this scenario? We have to kill the goat, right? So it fell through and out the thing. So like it's it's straining trying to run away because it is uh it's 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 sitting next to like a horizontal portal. So it's sitting on flat ground, but it's at the end of its length. Uh I'm going to yell for Smokey to throw me their hemp rope, and then I'm going to try and strangle the goat with the hemp rope. <laughs> okay, uh, I do that. All right. So, and you hear the voices going, "Hey, what are you doing with our goat?" And uh, she drops the the rope down to you. Yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna try and like tie it around the goat's yeah, neck. Yeah, like just wrap it. How long is this uh, hemp rope? Fifty feet. Yeah. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping it and like cinching it tighter and tighter until hopefully the goat is dead. All right, so the Jesus. the goat's trying to fight against you doing this. So can you roll strength here? Does it have like large horns? How big of a goat is this? Uh, it's uh, it's got like medium sized horns. They're kind of they're they're pretty sharp looking. It could like gore me. It could hurt you for sure. What am I rolling? rolling strength, because okay. you're trying to wrangle the goat. I'm not strong, by the way. Uh, I rolled a so, four. So you got a four. Um, so you're, you're not really able to get the, like any tension around the goat's neck. Okay. And it's kind of thrashing and it's like stabbing you a bit and it's hurting. Hmm. Um, what are you going to do here, Smokey? I am thinking like, oh fuck, I bet you that pen had poison in it. That would have been real good to have right now. Um, but I jump off the roof, um, and I'm going to try and force feed the goat in my floor drugs and hope <laughs> to overdose it. <laughs> Perfect plan. Yeah. Uh. So you are you. So you're trying to uh jam the 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 drugs like in the goat's mouth or what? Yes. Okay. Roll speed on that one. Um. Okay. I 
am neither good nor bad at speed. So just roll one color. Roll. We'll just we'll just take the blue one. Six. Eight. eight. Um, eight. So you get the drugs in the goat's mouth, and uh, it bites three. Wait, hold on. What's uh? Let's roll a d4 here. It bites one of your fingers off. Which one is it going to bite off? Uh, hold on. Do I have a five-sided die? Is that a thing? No, it's, your thumb wasn't in the play. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, he bites off my pointer finger. All right, so you lose your pointer finger. You're in a lot of pain, and uh, the the guys hear this commotion and they're all running at you. Uh, but the goat has consumed the drugs. Okay. Um, hmm. And what else did you guys have in your inventories? What was your other item? Oh, you had nothing. Is there anything you want to declare that you would have had at a festival? Uh, no. All I right. have like I have like my bag, like my water bag. All right. I have like so a load of bag on a string. Oh, can I have a drink of that? Actually, I got the Mad yeah. Pasties, bro. Thank you. Mad Pasties, no problem. <laughs> I'm here for you. Um, I also, I'm just having this thought: like, what if this goat is just chill and it doesn't actually want to be the Yule goat, and we just take it back to the festival with us, and it's just not the Yule goat anymore? It's just the fun festival goat. Can we just portal out of here? How? Hmm. I think you've got one portal left. Oh right. Ooh. Where can I shoot it, though? Oh, wait. So we can't get out of here until fe- the guy that gave us the missions b- brings us back? Or, I mean, it's up to you what you want to try and do in the situation. You're now being set upon by a bunch of people with, like, torches and pitchforks. And they're freaking out about this goat. So you're probably going to want to make a decision of whether you're, uh, of what you want to do here. Do we kill the goat or run away and try to, like, make a life in the weird... Uh, christmas countryside i vote i vote we pick up the goat and take him with us because like also he's just consumed a lot of drugs that he hasn't done before and he's probably gonna need some some guides yeah you're right certainly with all of my experience we should trip sit the goat we should try and take the goat to sanctuary that is definitely what he needs right now all right so your only impediment here is the goat's tether oh uh can we cut it somehow i'm gonna just, try and chew just close the, the portal that the goat like because if we just close the portal, would that just cut the rope that the ghost tether? Can I just close a single portal and it will cut it? I think that would work. Okay, I'm gonna close the portal inside of the barn. All right. So the uh, the closing of the portal severs the te- severs the tether, mm-hmm. and you have you you're still kind of like wrapped around this goat, and uh, you've kind of got the your rope like loosely kind of a bit around its neck, and these people are. These people are screaming at you. There's like ten of them. Like, hey, that's a, that's our that's our goat. Give us the goat. And then one of you starts waving its pitchfork at you. What we should try to do is like shoot my last remaining portal like as far off into the distance as possible. And then since there's already a portal on the wall, we could just like walk through it and we'd be very far away. Yeah. You kept the wall one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would Hell work. Yeah. I'm just going to shoot it off into the distance and hope for Which the best. Which direction? Uh, north. Well, like relative to where you came from. Oh, okay. Um, where are the people coming from? They're coming from the house, which is the opposite of where your like, entryway so you dimensional have, like, portal house, was. all of the hay bales in the field and then barn? You, you have the, like, you're the line of buildings that you approached yep. is in the middle. Okay. So behind you, let's call that north, is the property fence where you came in, where you came in through a dimensional portal. And sway south is the uh is the like the farmhouse, which was down the road, and that's where all those people are like setting upon you from. And they are like feet away from you. I'm gonna shoot it just way off into wherever past the property line fence. All right. So you fire off that portal. And then you're going to, all of you with the goat, you're just going to try to hop in the portal next to you? Yes. All right. That works. And uh, you find yourself right back where you started. There is, uh, you can kind of see, it's not your portal. It's that like extra dimensional portal. And as you look through your portal, you see these people trying to clamber through your portal at you. I'm going to close it. All right. 
<laughs> cut so them in half. I want you to roll speed on this to see how this went. You're good at this? No, actually, I'm bad because of the two CI I took. Oh, no. Five. All right. So two of them get through, and the third one you cut in half. So the those two stumble as they're like toppled by the by like the torso of the pitchfork wielding person behind them. But they're getting to their feet and they're they're trying to grab at you. Um are we near um the Shrivelly's body? No, you've portaled way the hell away from it. You're oh, you're back okay. next to your original portal that uh that brought you here. Oh, okay. I thought that that was where he died. Um, okay, never mind. I'm gonna. No, he's in the middle of the field. He's he's all shriveled up over there. Oh, okay. Can we leave through the original interdimensional portal? I don't see why not. Uh, I'm gonna walk through that with the goat. All right. So you you managed to pull the goat into the portal, and uh, what do you do here? Uh, Is the oh, yeah. me? Yeah, sorry, Smokey. What do you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm also doing it. I'm All going right. So to... since you're the second one through, can we do a quick speed roll for for how this goes? Are you good or bad at speed? Uh, neither. I'm neutral at speed. Just roll one. Six. All right. Uh, so you, with a six, um, the one of them takes a swing at you with like a machete, oh. and hits your other hand. Mm. And do you want to roll that d4 for me? You lose all four fingers on that hand. Okay, so I'm missing now my pointer finger on one hand and all four fingers on the other hand? Yeah. Okay. So the two of you stumble through the portal, goat and all. You find yourself back in the Xmascom command center, and uh, you stand at the uh, the feet of the antipope, who sees that you have brought back the goat that you were asked to kill. So the antipope sighs and he goes, well, you know, I guess it's not a complete failure. And he withdraws like a giant knife from under a table (laughs) and just slits the goat throat right in front of you. And the goat bleeds out in front of you. Uh, Kind of making the same like gurgling noises that Mm -hmm. your, your companion shrivelly made. And you watch the, you watch the light drain out of the, the goat's eyes. Well, he went out the the way. I would have wanted to go out tripping balls and high as fuck. Do you want to get your throat slit as well? <laughs> I mean, not yet. Oh, ah, actually, can I borrow that knife? I'd like to cut the goat open and try and see if I can rescue any of the drugs from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't dissolved yet. Um. Ro- okay, uh, roll persuasion on that. <laughs> what is your persuasion? Um... I am neutral on persuasion. Six. Six. He goes, no, get, I, listen, you quit wasting my time. You did a horrible job. I mean, okay, you did fine job. I will pay you in more drugs on your way out. Just see my assistant, uh, Snigut, um, uh, my assistant, uh, Lucy, and uh, I must go. I have people to see, things to do, and of course, those are euphemism for interrogation and torture, respectively. So yeah, uh, any she'll help you with anything you'll need, and stoje uh, jelayu udachi, and he just like walks off into uh, into a side door marked dungeon, and the door snaps shut behind him, and you're just left there with the uh, the assistant you were with in the shuttle, and in that beautiful angelic voice, she says, "Okay, you want to go back to one timeline now?" And uh, she kind of like opens a new hatch in the floor. And if you look into it, you can see the camp you were in. I uh, look down at the goat and I shake my head and I say, greatest of all time. And then I go through the hatch. I'm going to pick up the goat carcass and try to bring it with me through the hatch. (laughs) Uh, She smacks your hand away and shoves you into the hatch. And she goes, enough of you. And uh, just take this. And she like stuffs a hundred bucks into your back pocket. Hmm. You find yourself in the camp that you left from, and you have you find yourself with uh, mutilated fingers, and you you have that glass injury, right? Uh, 
What was that from? Yeah, from when you smashed the window. Yes, definitely. So you've got like shards of glass in your hand, and Smokey, you are you can see that your fingers are all like on the ground. Uh, there's there's like a bloody knife next to all of them, and you everyone in the camp is like screaming at both of you, like ma- yelling at you for trashing the whole camp. The whole camp is trashed. Uh, and you're bleeding everywhere, and somebody's calling for medical, and uh, you know to try and reattach your fingers. Uh, but you do happen to notice that you do indeed, uh, Yvonne. You have hundred bucks in your back pocket, and uh, Smokey, you've got a you know you got like a nice little dime bag of whatever whatever you want in your in your pocket. I got a fucking dime bag for that shit. <laughs> we- well, you got you got like a whole yeah whole gram. Um, sick. And I look at Powder Puff and I go, oh, a Puff, like, like weed Puff, like smoking a joint, man. I'm like, oh, it's like two, your name's cool in two ways. I just got that. And I try Did to, you hold, try up to hold up my fingers. Did you try to hold up? Yeah, my fingers, but I'm just like, it's just like a fist because I don't have any fingers on my hand. I'm like, it's too, oh, shit. It's, it's cool in two ways though, bro. Um. And the festival ends, and uh, you have alienated all your friends, but uh, you know you did get some money and drugs out of it. And that Christmas, that Christmas ends up feeling a little bit different. You know, there's it's hard to put your finger on it, but uh, somehow you just feel a little more godly, and you just feel a little a little less pagan, which is uh, you know an odd feeling for festival goers. But that's the story of your uh, your summer and Christmas of 2012. So right. Orthodox uh, Christmas is the most of Christmas. That's what that's what the angel book told you. Yeah. Forced by fear and torture. You know, <laughs> Christmas works in mysterious ways. I dig it. Yeah, and uh, this show also works in mysterious ways. Is there a uh, is there any parting words you'd like to leave us with, Adam? Um, thank you. For letting me be the Croatian person of my dreams. It was beautiful.